in Columbus. This is Miss Dawn in a different spot. You're going to see me in, with two different hats on in two different places starting this summer, and some of you maybe already have. This is my extension spot. So if you've heard of Iowa State University Extension and Outreach for Lucas County, that's this spot right here. And I am going to get to do lots of fun activities with you starting today with some bicycle and summer safety. And I know you're doing a bike rodeo, so you're gonna learn lots about bikes. But some of the things that we're putting together here at Extension and also at the library, we're gonna talk about other summer things. So you have a worksheet that looks like this. It's called Safe Summer, and it talks about how we can keep safe in the sun when we swim on a bike, or a scooter or any other thing you might ride and how do we keep keep safe at a park and then there are some other things I'll talk about when I'm at the library with that hat on and also these are some really cool beads I don't know maybe some of you have seen these before they're kind of magic they're called UV beads and they're going to teach you all about sunshine and UV light so hello Columbus now I'm in my other spot. I'm surrounded by my books and my friends, the crayons, and lots of other reading friends here at the Sheraton Public Library. And I wanted to show you the other side of your bookmark. So on this side of the bookmark, we have Reading Colors Your World, which is the theme for this year's summer reading program. On June 18th, July 9th, and July 30th, we are going to have a special summer reading program parties at, the, at Constitution Park. There will be things to do, lots of crafts and games and all kinds of fun. And then we're also planning a grand finale for sometime mid-August before school starts. But I'm waiting to find out some more information before I can release that date. So I thought you'd like to know all of the things that you can do from both sides of the So postcard. what do we talk about most when we're at the library? We talk about reading, right? Well, the important thing about reading is not just that you do it, but that you get something out of it. So first we learn to read, and then we read to learn. So sometimes reading to learn means reading a nonfiction book about something that really happened or a real person. Sometimes it means reading fiction, but even when you read fiction, you can learn things about the world around you or different places in the world or different activities and today I have some summer and bicycle stories for you and we're going to talk a little bit about how to stay safe all summer long. This book is called Bicycle Book by Gail Gibbons. A bicycle is a two-wheeled vehicle that gets its power when the rider pushes the pedals around in a circle. The word bicycle means two wheel. Bi means two and cycle means wheel or circle. The first idea for a bicycle was similar to this and is believed to have been drawn by the Italian artist and inventor Leonardo da Vinci about 500 years ago. His sketch looked a bit like the bicycles we see today. Look, the only thing that's missing is the crossbar. The first bicycle was built in France in about 1800. It didn't have pedals. The rider powered the hobby horse by using his feet to push along the ground in a running motion. There are bikes like that today, aren't there? I think they're called razors or something like that for, for kids who haven't learned how to pedal yet. About 1840, the first bicycle with pedals was built. The pedals moved the rear wheel by using cranks. Next, a bicycle was invented that used pedals to power the bike by turning the front wheel. It was called the Velocipede. About 1870, the high wheeler, also called the Penny Farthing, was built. It had a big front wheel that made it go faster. Then, about 1880, the first bicycle that looks like a modern bike was built. It was called the Safety Bicycle. The wheels on this bike were about the same size. Pedals moved the rear wheel by means of a sprocket, wheels, and chains. See, looks a lot like our bikes. Today's bicycles are the result of many design changes. See, there's all the parts of a bike. They are more sturdy, safer, and they weigh less. 
To give a bicycle its power, the rider pushes the pedals around and around. These pedals are attached to cranks that turn a sprocket wheel. See, there's the sprocket wheel. The sprocket wheel is connected by the chain to a smaller sprocket wheel at the axle of the bicycle's rear wheel. See, right there. As the larger sprocket wheel turns, the rear sprocket wheel turns more quickly because it is smaller. All bicycles have at least two sprocket wheels, one at the pedals and one at the rear axle. When there are more than two sprocket wheels, there is a gear system. This makes pedaling easier at different times. Many bikes have a derailleur gear system that moves the chain from one sprocket wheel to another. This happens when the rider moves the cable operated gear shift. Some of you might have bikes like that. And if you have a bike like that, that means the brake is on the handlebar, right? And if you have just two sprockets, that means your brakes are in the pedals and you have to push down to stop. Some bikes have an internal gear system at the rear wheel axle. The gears are shifted by moving the gear shift or twisting the handlebars. Very similar. Turning the handlebars makes the front wheel turn. To stop, either foot brakes or hand brakes are used. The foot brake stops a bike when one of the pedals is pushed backward, like we just said. Each hand brake is connected to brake pads by a cable. When the hand lever is squeezed, the brake pads press against the rim of the wheel. There are five basic kinds of bikes. First is the simple bike that has only one speed and foot brake pedals. That's what most of us learn to ride on, isn't it? A touring bike is lightweight and usually has 10 or more speeds. It is used for long bike trips and for fun and pleasure. Touring bikes have thinner tires too. A racing bike is lighter and lighter than a touring bike and may have many different speeds. It has very thin tires. A mountain bicycle has a strong frame and wide tires. It is designed for trail riding in rough areas. A dirt bike, also called a BMX bike, has a small frame and small wheels. It has long handlebars and a high seat. Most have only one speed. They are for racing on dirt tracks and having fun. Bicycles are used in different ways. Many are used for work. Did you know that? Many are used to get to work. I know of at least one teacher here in Sheraton that rides his bike to work many days out of the week. Often bicycles are used for fun and sports too. Bike races are exciting. These bicycles are designed to go very fast. There are road races and track races. Oh look, here's a care checklist. Did you know you have to maintain your bike just like you would a car? It is important to take care of a bicycle so it is safe to ride. It is good to have someone at a bicycle shop check a bike once a year. Here are some safety rules and you'll probably talk about these as part of your bike rodeo. Wear a bicycle helmet. Obey all signs. Those signs aren't just there for cars. If you are on the road and you come to a stop sign, you have to stop. You also have to yield. Keep to the right. Ride in the direction the traffic is going, not against it. So you ride on the same side of the street as the cars going the same direction. Obey all local laws for bikers. That's very important. Watch out for potholes and other problems. So while a car might hit that pothole and it's just a big uncomfortable bump, if a bike hits it, you might just actually flip off your bike. So don't ride through potholes. Don't overload your bike. Watch out for people opening car doors. Don't want to run into that. Look both ways at crossroads. Use hand signals. So you, you signal with your left hand and when your left hand is up, that means you're going to turn right. If it's straight out from your side, you're going to turn left. And if your palm is facing down, that means you're going to stop or slow down. And it's safest to ride during daylight hours. If you are caught out after dark, your bike should have lights and reflectors and always tell someone where you are going. 
And for you guys at Columbus, not just tell someone, make sure you ask permission and make sure that your grown-ups know where you're going. Bicycle designs are always changing. New ideas for safer, more comfortable, and faster bicycles are being tried out all the time. Biking is fun. You can go almost anywhere under your own power. And here are some examples of, of bikes around the world. One early bicycle was called the Bone Shaker. It was very uncomfortable to ride. It doesn't look like there's a seat. The first bicycle race champion was James Moore. He won a velocipede race in Paris, France. Maybe you've heard of the Tour de France in France. Um, that's a bicycle race. Stunts are done on bikes, and it says one rider bicycled down 1,710 steps of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France. Sounds like the French people like to do a lot of interesting things with bikes. One of the hardest bicycle races is in Paris, Cape T is the Paris Cape Town Rally. The three-week race goes through the Sahara Desert. So Ragbri is really hot, right? It goes all the way across Iowa, but all the way across the Sahara Desert? Oh my goodness. In the United States, more than 85 million people ride bicycles. And do you know what? It's really hard to find a bicycle right now, isn't it? Everybody seems to have decided that riding a bike was a great way to spend their time during all of the COVID stuff. So finding a new bike is really, really hard. So make sure you take really good care of your bikes. And also remember that pretty much all of you, um, all of you friends at Columbus are short. Even if you're on a good sized bike, you are short, which makes you harder to see for cars. So even if you always have the right of way, the car might not see you. And even if you always have the right of way, who is going to win in a car versus bicycle crash? It's pretty much always going to be the car. So please, please be safe. Wear your helmet, stay to the side of the road, and follow all the rules that you're going to learn in your bicycle rodeo. Hello again. So I have a couple of those funny magic beads here on a pipe cleaner, and you're each gonna get a couple of beads so that you can do this experiment as well. So what color are these beads? They're kind of boring, aren't they? So I'm gonna take these beads outside and I'm gonna see what happens, and I'll be back to show you. I'm back inside and I noticed that one bead turned very yellow and the other bead got kind of pink and something else happened to my glasses. These are called transition lenses and they work very similar to the way these beads work. It's all about ultraviolet light. So hopefully you'll learn. So I'm going to say some names and let's see if you know what they are. Van Allen, Columbus, Hafferty, Eikenberry, Northwest, Railroad, and I'm sure there's other names. Do you know what all of those places have in common? They have parks, that's right. And a lot of those parks have wood chips. What kind of shoes should you wear to play in wood chips? Probably not flip-flops, right? Wear your tennis shoes. They might be a little bit hotter, but it's better than getting splinters in your toenails. And speaking of splinters, if you do spend time at the Van Allen playground, remember that it is a wooden structure and it is um, very, very dry. And there are a lot of splinters that have been gotten at that playground. And your Van Allen friends know this, but you haven't spent as much time on that playground yet. And so you might not know that fact. So you want to be very careful and make sure a grown up knows where you are at all times, no matter which park you go to. Some of the parks have a softer surface or they have some sandy areas or lots of grass. Yoakum Park has um, a sand pit with the digger things in it and then there's a lot of grassy area. Uh, so each park is different. Make sure that you are wearing appropriate shoes and some of the parks are in full sun. I don't know if there's any shade at the Van Allen playground. Um, I know that there is some shade at the Yoakum Park playground, but not at all of them. So make sure you're wearing your sunscreen. And what is something about sunscreen? Should you just put it on in the middle of the sunshine and just keep going? 
No, you should put it on and wait in the shade or inside for 10 or 15 minutes so that the sunscreen can absorb into your skin and be ready to protect you. So that's very important. And if you have your UV beads with you, if you see them turn a really bright color, you'll know that there is a lot of sunburn rays coming down from the sky on that day, and you should make sure to reapply your sunscreen. It doesn't last all day. So you have to make sure that you reapply it if you're going to stay in the sun. Now, I'm going to read to you a little bit about the sun's light. And while I do that, you can watch my glasses lenses. They'll continue to get lighter and clearer as they spend more time inside. So have you ever been outside in the sun for a long time? Did your skin turn red or did it hurt when, you, when somebody touched you? Well, you probably had a sunburn. The sun gives us more than light we can see. It also gives off rays that are invisible. And some of these rays are called ultraviolet light rays or UV rays. UV light from the sun causes sunburns and can also hurt your eyes. You can protect your skin and eyes from the sun by wearing sunscreen, sunglasses, and a hat. Have you ever heard that before? Special beads called UV beads will change color when put in UV light. UV beads are white in the light of a lamp and show their colors when they are in sunlight. The brighter the colors of the UV beads, the stronger the UV light. So I don't think our UV index, the index that tells us how strong the UV rays are today, is very high because these beads had a hard time changing color. It took them a while and this bead didn't change much at all. This one got very yellow. But as they sit here, just like my glasses, they're going back to their regular color. So what does that tell you about UV rays? What do you need to do to keep yourself safe this summer? You're going to stay in the sun. Now, park safety uh, is important for two reasons. Number one, we want you to be safe. And number two, we want to take care of the parks for ourselves and for all of the other people in town and the visitors who come to use our parks. So we need to make sure to be respectful of the property, throw our trash away if we have a snack or some kind of trash. We need to make sure that we keep any park restrooms clean and tidy because did you know it's someone's mom that takes care of those restrooms. It's someone's mom or dad or uncle who takes care of the the grass and the playground equipment. So imagine if it was your mom or your grown up from your house who was doing that um, taking care of those parks and the bathrooms, which sometimes get kind of gross, right? Imagine that was you or someone in your house. How would you feel if you walked in and you had to clean up grossness, right? So make sure you use the golden rule and take care of the parks the same way you would if it was your own house or your own yard or you were the one who had to clean up the mess. Okay, so we've talked about sunscreen being safe in the sun. We've talked about bicycles. We've talked about parks. What is something else that we do in the summertime? Gosh, what is fun to do when it's really, really hot and you just feel like you might melt? Eat a popsicle? That would be fun. Then make sure you throw your trash away, right? Popsicle sticks. They're really good for crafts. So you can always wash those off and save them for crafts. But what's something else that would be really, really fun to do and really cool you off and it just feel really good? Swimming. Swimming would be a great idea. I have a fun story for you about a little boy who did not want to swim. And while you're listening to this story, Make sure you watch for some safety things. What are some things that we have to do to stay safe in the pool or in the water, right? There are sprinklers. There's all kinds of different water we can play in and we need to be safe all the time. So this is called The Boy Who Wouldn't Swim by Deb Lucky. Look, that's a big pool. And here's where the lifeguard sits. And the lifeguard is very important, right? You always have to follow the lifeguard's directions. It was so hot that summer that the whole town practically lived in the pool. 
The Wilsons, the Hurlbuts, the Ignacios, the Wittenmeyers, and the Dooleys were there so much, you'd think they got out of the water only to sleep. There wasn't a person in Claremont County who didn't have prune toes. Except Eric Dooley. Nothing would get Eric into the pool. When his mom came over wearing her swim cap and an encouraging smile, he said, No! before she could even open her mouth. He said the same thing when one of the Wilson twins invited him to an underwater tea party. And when Mr. Ignacio threw a nickel into the pool and yelled, Finders keepers! He was so busy ignoring them that at first he didn't notice his younger sister, Jessica, getting swim lessons meant for him. Put your face in the water and blow bubbles, dear, his mom said. Blub, blub, blub. Eric didn't know which was worse being afraid to learn how to swim, or being jealous of Jess learning how to swim. His mom saw him watching. Want to join us, Eric? Are you kidding? She just blew spit all over the pool, he shouted. Rex, the lifeguard, pointed a warning figure at Jess and blew his whistle. Pool rules, no spitting, he said. A remarkably short while later, his mom said, Look, Jessica's dog paddling. You could too, Eric. Eric closed his eyes and feigned indifference. He kept them shut so long, his eyelids tanned. When he finally opened them, it was the end of June. Jessica was swimming right across the middle of the pool where the water was the deepest. She looked really pleased with herself too. Under his thick coating of sunblock, Eric was green with envy. He stood up and yelled, Shark! Jessica panicked. She dog paddled, breaststroked, and crawled until she reached the solid ground of Mr. Ignacio's head. Rex, the lifeguard, had to climb down from his chair to pry her off. She took the last few strands of Mr. Ignacio's hair with her. Then his mom gave Eric a timeout. By the time it was over, Jessica had learned how to swim underwater. He couldn't believe it. All he'd learned how to do was freckle. When Jess came up for a breath, Eric yelled, Baby pee! <laughs> Jess screamed and scrambled up the ladder. Right behind her were Mrs. Wittermeyer, all the Hurlbuts, and the Wilsons. Mr. Ignacio got out too, being careful to keep his distance from Jess. The rest of the Dooleys got out as well. Although they suspected that Eric was making it up, especially since all the babies were over in the baby pool. Rex had to test the water to prove it was clean while the whole town looked on, hot, sweaty, and irritated, just the way Eric had been all summer. After that, Eric had a long time out. A very, very long time out. When he was finally back in his lounge chair, it was mid-July. He was shocked to see Jessica on the end of the diving board. Their eyes locked and she said, na, 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 and then she jumped off. Tsunami, yelled Eric, but nobody paid him the least bit of attention. Eric sat in his chair on the hot concrete and steamed for most of August while Jess jumped off the diving board again and again. Eric was so hot, he thought he might melt. But the idea of plunging into that bottomless pit of icy blue water made him sweat even more. Finally, he couldn't stand it any longer. When no one was looking, he snuck over to the baby pool and waded in. Instantly, he was nice and cool, at least from the ankles down. But the babies were giving him weird looks. They began to cry and then wail. Eric realized they were right. He was no baby. He got out, went to the big pool, and without thinking about it too much, took a deep breath and climbed down the ladder. He made it as far as the second rung. There's the pool edge. See his toes holding on. Eventually, he let his mom pry his hands off the ladder and tow him around. It was so nice and cool in the water that sometimes, just once in a while, he forgot to be scared. The next day, he got his first swim lesson, without his giraffe. Before long, he had pruned toes, 
just like everyone else. And just like that, he went from being the boy who wouldn't swim to being the boy who wouldn't get out of the pool. By the last week of August, Eric could dog paddle, breaststroke, and crawl. He had an underwater tea party with Jess and the Wilson twins. He was thinking about giving the diving board a try when the pool closed for the season. The Wilsons, the Hurlbuts, the Ignatios, the Wittemeyers packed up their sunblock and damp towels and went home. The Dooleys would have done the same, but Eric wouldn't get out of the pool. Rex, the lifeguard, needed to leave for college, but he couldn't go off duty as long as someone was in the pool. Nothing would get Eric out, not even after the weather turned. Look at those fall leaves. The Dooley family sat on their lounge chairs, cold, shivering, and irritated, while Eric swam back and forth across the pool. He looked really pleased with himself, too. Burr! Now, of course, that part wouldn't happen, right? When it's time to get out of the pool, we all get out of the pool because the lifeguard says so. So what are some pool safety rules? Do we ever run at the pool? No, never. Not even if you really, 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 really have to go to the bathroom or you, or the concrete is really, 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 really hot. Don't ever run at the pool because it's too easy to slip and fall and hurt yourself or someone else. So no running ever. And if the lifeguard blows his whistle or her whistle, you'll always look to see what the whistle is being blown for because it might be something you need to know. So maybe it's a whistle blow because everybody needs to get out of the pool. Or maybe it's for one person like Jess in the book who didn't really spit in the water, right? She was blowing bubbles. But uh, we don't spit and we don't, we don't pee in the pool, right? We don't do any of those kinds of things. And again, we always take care of our spots, pick up our stuff, take care of our trash, do all of those things because we are chargers and we're respectful and responsible and safe.